Welcome to the Fantasy Football Sackos Podcast with your hosts, Jason Shellcross and Alex Krobe. Let's go! Fantasy Football Sackos. Ten weeks in the book. We got our uh, three weeks left until playoff madness begins. That's right. The, the second half of the season that's only three weeks long. Alex, how was your weekend, buddy? Are, how how did your fantasy weekend go? I don't even want to talk about it anymore. Like, yeah, we've I've got four teams. We're through ten weeks, and I've won twelve games. <laughs> like, that's barely even one a week. Uh, like, oh my god. Yeah. It's awful. Stay here for some and, yeah, amazing. The only thing, the only thing worse is, go on. Then I know the, the only thing worse than my fantasy teams this year is the waiver wire this week. Honestly, <laughs> it's terrible. You think the waiver wire is that <laughs> bad this awful. week? Like, all right, guys, that's our show. Uh, thanks for listening. Please follow us on all of our social media <laughs> platforms. Uh, yeah, like. Just like <laughs> you brought like, it up, let's get awful. into it. So bad. Our number one, our first, well, not number one, on, but our first waiver wire pickup of the week. Let's start at quarterback and the 2019 passing yards leader, Jameis Winston. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, only rostered in 2% of leagues. Good Lord. Jameis Winston completed six of 10 throws, filling in for Drew Brees this weekend or last weekend, who suffered multiple rib fractures and a collapsed lung on Sunday. Uh, up next for the Saints is Atlanta, who's allowing more than eight yards per pass attempt and more than 300 passing yards per game. I think Jameis Winston is an excellent streaming candidate, considering he'll be available in virtually every fantasy football league there is, except for super flex leagues. Um, you got Taysom Hill there. I don't know how much of a threat he is to to steal that quarterback job. I, I doubt it. Um, and yeah, like I said, Jameis Winston led the NFL in passing yards last year. And picks, but we don't need to talk about it. <laughs> oh man he uh he didn't look very good yesterday i'm gonna be honest with you he ate too Watching many w's game, six of ten 63 yard yeah what is it the yeah there you go it's like that so yeah um he 2.3 fantasy points and a half. I I know he's got Atlanta. Um, I here we talked about this before we started, and I said that Taysom Hill is going to be a serviceable tight end this week against Atlanta. I think that Taysom Hill is going to have more fantasy points than Jameis Winston does this week. Wow. Is it scary that I actually kind of don't want to take that? I bet they both finish at like 15. I mean, I mean, maybe uh, Sean Payne's not going to say who their starting quarterback is until later in the week. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be Jameis Winston, but um, I just wouldn't be surprised to see Taysom Hill be overly serviceable as a tight end only in ESPN, not in Yahoo because he's listed as a quarterback. Um. But yeah, Jameis Winston didn't look good. Um, and but again, he's facing Atlanta. If you're in a rough spot, you can start him. But I just don't like he was running around and he looked like. I I can't even describe what he was doing with ball security. He was like, holding it like crab he legs. was wearing a jock strap without a cup. Like, <laughs> like, I, I, I don't know what he it was just like dangling out there like come on somebody like the, come hit it and make just me like fumble. the crab legs at walmart um, i well he made sure those were very secure <laughs> when he was trying to leave the store 
<laughs> God, what a loser this guy is. Um, so <sighs> yeah, I I don't know. I I I don't want to start either one of them, honestly. Um I think there's better options. Hopefully, I'd start Mill at tight end. If you need somebody, but that's about it. It's a zero. It's a zero bid. But yeah, not great. Yeah, man. All right, our no. our next quarterback is this show is off to a blazing start. <laughs> our next quarterback streaming quality. If you're super desperate, like I am, uh, somebody that got cute tried to spot start Jared Goff and. That went up in flames, all ten and a half points. Thank you, Malcolm Brown. <laughs> Thank you, Malcolm Brown, for stealing all of my fantasy points. Our next quarterback is Tua Tagovailoa. Uh, he has three state three straight wins and back to back multiple touchdown performances. Uh, the schedule is extremely favorable with the Broncos, Jets, and Bengals up next. Like Drew Locke is probably out for the Broncos. So you got to love that defense. You think they're probably going to get two of the ball a lot. Um, And then the Jets and Bengals after it, they don't scare me either. It's a little annoying. He only completed 15 of 25 passes. Um, I, I mean, I guess I get that the Chargers are a good defense, but I guess I was expecting more. I do like the rush attempts. He did have another six attempts. Granted, it was for negative one yards, but I think Tua is going to be okay this week i feel like he puts up probably close to 20 points against the broncos but yeah i think he's a fine streamer anything yeah you just got to be aware of the weather and what it's doing in denver if there's snow or something like that um i I don't know what the forecast is seven days out but um especially when it gets to be this time of year you have to be aware of um you know what weather forecasts are going to be. So like, for example, I had no idea that there was going to basically be a hurricane, uh, in Baltimore on Sunday night football, um, this week. And, um, so, Hey, take it from the experts here. Pay attention to the weather. Apparently it makes a difference. Same with Cleveland. Um, So yeah, just like, that would be my only concern. Yeah. that, That, that's my only concern with Tua is, um, is the weather in Denver. Uh, he should light up the Broncos because everybody has been um, through the air. Their run defense is fine. Um, but uh, yeah, to, to beat them through the air. And again, Miami's defense is going to put them in favorable, favorable positions, especially if Drew Locke's not playing. I would expect a turnover. Uh, I believe that Miami's defense has a turnover in 18 straight games. I didn't I don't yeah. know if I remember. I, I said this to you this weekend. Um, I, I believe it's uh, I believe it's 18 straight games. They have a turnover um, for that wonderful Miami defense, which has made me look smart. If you listen to me, you're all smart. You're very smart. You're great at what you do. And that's why uh, that's why we do this. this year. Well, we just need to execute better and there needs to be a lot less injuries. But I mean, it's just a very frustrating fantasy football year for a lot of people just between three weeks of COVID for Tennessee and then injury after injury, it's just been a frustrating year and just no consistency across the board. And that brings me, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I I would be very interested to hear people's feedback on what their leagues are setting up to be, because I feel like the people that are normally not the best people in their leagues have some of the best teams. Um, like just abstractly thinking out loud here um, in a bunch of the leagues that I'm in, some people that traditionally have not had very good teams seem to have very good teams this year. And the people that usually have very good teams don't have very good teams. And it's just, I, I can't like pinpoint it. Why it's gotta be injuries theoretically, but just it's nobody's been consistent across the board and and this is going to kind of be a whiny time with the sackos um for maybe a minute but it's like no nobody's been consistent this whole year like you'll go up to you'll have a nice week and then the next week like you're lucky to break like 80 yeah well and you've also had the complete turnaround 
of a couple offenses. Like to me, the absolute, and it's not even like it's that much worse than last year. It's just noticeably worse for the, um, for the Ravens. Like Lamar is not returning on his ADP at all where you had to get him. And there's no running back there. And Andrews has been up and no. down and there's no receiver either. Like Marquise Brown should be dropped like universally. But speaking of inconsistency, Absolutely. that brings me only go ahead. You, you should, you should drop him just on the sole fact that you don't have to think about playing him. He's because the every roster time you bomb. Look at him exactly. You're like, oh, you know what? I think this is the week he's going to break out. He's going to break out this week, and then he doesn't, and he gets nothing. And you're like, oh man, man, oh man, can't believe I started him. And then the next week, you're getting ready for the week, and you look at the roster, and you're like, I think Marquise Brown. I, I mean, it's coming, and then he does nothing again. Um, so just make somebody else deal with it. He's He's like Dwayne Bowe was for a long time for Kansas City, where you just look at him, you're like, I think, I think this is going to be the week. And then, nope, it's yeah. not. So just let somebody else deal with him. Or how Amari was in Vegas or, or Oakland at that time. But just the, yeah. the ups and downs. But that inconsistency for the third time, I'm going to try to intro this player. That brings me to Naheem Hines. Good old Naheem. Your guy. I hate him. Uh, a million points in the in week one. <laughs> a million points in week one. He had a million points again this week. Uh, so I spent like forty percent of my fab after week one trying to pick up Naheem Hines. Got him. Um, and then he did nothing for the next five weeks in a row. So I dropped him because I didn't want to carry him on his week seven buy. And then week eight, he comes back against Detroit, puts up 20 and a half. So what do I do? I spend what little fab I have left trying to pick him up again. Then I get him. And then he drops five points, five point game. So then I turn around and drop him again. And then this weekend, he turns around and drops 26. <laughs> um, so yeah, Naheem Hines against the Tennessee Titans had 12 rushing attempts for 70 yards, averaged almost six yards a carry. Had a score on the ground, and then he also had five catches for 45 yards and a second score uh, through the air. He actually outpaced Jordan Wilkins and Jonathan Taylor by four and five carries, respectively. Um, he was the best running back on that team. I don't know what that backfield is. I don't know if Naheem Hines' usage is going to stay the same. For the rest of the season, what I do know is that he has an outrageous schedule that I love between Green Bay, Tennessee at home the next two weeks and then at Houston. Um, even his playoff schedule is not bad at Las Vegas, at home against Houston and then at Pittsburgh. I mean, that at Pittsburgh, that's not going to go well. You're not going to start him. That's probably a five pointer. But at Las Vegas and at home against Houston would could be good. So I think you got five weeks of usage out of him where he could put up these 20 point weeks that he seems that he's able to. He's proved it. Uh, it's just that 70 percent of Naheem's high Naheem Hines scoring has come in just three games. And he's played nine. So. <laughs> if he's available in your league and he's only rostered in 41% of leagues, I would recommend you pick him up. I would recommend that you play him against Green Bay as a flex and against Tennessee next week, considering what he did to Tennessee this week. And I feel dirty because I'm recommending somebody that had 30% of their points come in three or 70% of their points come in just three games. So, I don't know. I hate this backfield. I hate Jonathan Taylor. I hate Jordan Wilkins. And I maybe, do you play none of them? But you have to. If this guy's going to get 20 points, you have to play him, right? There's so much hatred in your heart. It makes me sad. I'm just 
of how <sighs> just dejected over Naheem Hines. You're so angry. The fact that Jonathan Taylor Thomas. is there and he was a top 15 back coming into the week and Naheem Hines is there and Jordan Wilkins, there is literally nobody that knows which running back is the one to play. There's literally nobody. Maybe the running backs coach for the Colts. That's it. Because apparently he's listening to Thursday Night Football. That's who's in charge of playing him. Where they literally said, whoever has a hot hand, we're going to give him the ball more. And to me, watching the game, Naheem Hines clearly looks like the best back there. Just from like a, like he's, he's way quicker than either of the other two. The other two are more like pounders. Um, and Naheem Hines is like the, he's very Austin Eckler-ish, right? I mean, th- that's what you were hoping he was going to be after week one. Um, and we've seen it two out of the last three weeks where he's had over 20 points. The schedule coming up, Green Bay, Tennessee at Houston is delicious, but you don't know if he's going to be the guy. I guess you just assume that Hines is going to be the guy and you start him if you pick him up. How much to bid on him? I have not a freaking clue. Um, I I think he can go anywhere from 10 to 15 percent um, be, just because of the next three, three or four weeks. Uh, he has Houston week 15, um, which is great um, during the playoffs and the Vegas matchup isn't terrible either. If they're going to be throwing as much as they are and checking down to him as much as they are, then yeah, I, I guess Naheem Hines is startable. I mean, he, he's been, he's a poor, he's freaking a borderline RB one based on three weeks. It's incredible. That just goes to show how bad the RB scoring has been this year, just because of all the position or because of all the position injuries that they've suffered. I just, Three big weeks should not be enough to make you a running back one through 10 weeks of the season. And the guy had a buy. Like, uh, I hate running backs this year. Um, are, are you at 10 to 15%? Are you higher than that? Oh, we haven't even talked fab. Um, how much fab would I spend on Naheem Hines? I would not go higher than 15%. I would probably go less. I would probably spend like 12 because... We've said it before. We've said it all year. If you want a player, you cannot bid in increments that end in five or zero dollars. You need to throw in a couple extra bucks to sprinkle on top of whoever you're trying to pick up. Um, I actually sprinkle. Yeah, sprinkle, sprinkle. I actually was able to pick up Mike Davis with a thirty six dollar bid over somebody that uh, bid thirty five dollars. Because again, people like to bid nice. in five and zero increments, and I beat them by a buck. So, all right, let's move on, shall we? Our next running back pickup is Kalen Balage. I feel dirty uh, recommending <laughs> Kalen Balage. <laughs> but you have Justin Jackson on IR, you have Austin Eckler on IR for at least a few more weeks. Uh, I really wanted it to be Troy Main Pope here, but it is not. And I feel silly for being wrong about that. I just didn't believe in a waiver wire pickup practice team hero behind Troy Main Pope being the guy that you want on a team. Um, but yeah, there's nobody else in front of him. Josh Kelly is not it for whatever reason. Um, nope. So, yeah, I guess fire up some Balage. How much fab are you going to spend trying to land Kalen Balage? Less than 10? 10 to 15? <sighs> so, they have the Jets this week, which is an okay matchup. But this is probably the last week that he's playable because Austin Eckler is projected to come back in week 12. Um, he's progressed to straight line running. So unless he hurts himself in workouts over the next week, theoretically, he's coming back in week 12. So I'm, it just all depends. I, he's not somebody that you want to be starting, um, because it's possible that Josh, I mean, Joshua Kelly got a goal line carry the other day. 
So it's not it's not like Bellagio is like the undisputed only back there. Um, I, I think he's a one to two percent bid if if you want him. Um, I get if you want to bid more to lock him up, but this is literally one week um, that he might be productive. So how much are you bidding on Kalen Bellage? A nickel? One to two percent. <laughs> okay. I get it. Uh, I'm not going to argue with you there. Yeah. I mean, it's... I think that they're going to absolutely just run all over uh, what, Denver this week. But... No, the Jets. Or I'm sorry, the Jets this week. Sorry. Oh, I'm just in a different world right now. But I'm just so I'm just so disappointed in fantasy right now. And I'm disappointed in these waivers. Like none of these guys really excite me. Here, here's my next waiver claim. That's why I was looking at and why I got confused and said Denver. Salvin Ahmed. 90 total yards on 22 touches this week. Last week. Ran uh, seven times for 38 yards against Arizona. 5.4 yards per carry. Actually a college teammate of Miles Gaskin. Don't know if you knew that. At Washington. Um, he's the guy there. <laughs> That's a thing, right? Like Patrick Laird he, had one target. They cut Jordan can Howard. Can we pour one out? And have a moment of silence for Jordan Howard. And every fantasy analyst. 33 yards, four touchdowns. He also had a catch for minus three yards, which really (laughs) is not surprising. Uh, In half PPR leagues, though, that's a total of 27 and a half points on 29 touches, which is basically like a point a touch. So... I mean, fantasy wise, he's probably one of the most productive fantasy running backs in NFL history over the course of a season based on touches. So we have that going for us. This Jesus episode has Christ. sucked. This episode has absolutely sucked. And so does Jordan Howard. Um, <laughs> so Selvan Al- Al- Ahmed. Um, so this comes down to if you think Matt Breed is going to be healthy. Uh, I mean, this is why, like, we, we talked about him last week. I thought Brady was going to be the only guy there this week, and then it was announced, like, right before the game that he was not going to play. Um, so it comes down to what his status is. Um, but, yeah, Salvin Ahmed uh, is the only guy. And if he's going to have 90 total yards against, you know, a Denver defense, I know the Denver's running uh, defense is pretty good. Um, but again, he's the only guy that they have. So a couple bucks because Gaskins will come back in a couple weeks. Like I, I don't think you can go out and, and blow it unless you got a bunch to spend. Oh man. Yeah. I would spend a couple bucks on him, I guess. I mean, I think he's usable in the short term. I'm kind of honestly a little bit frustrated. Like this whole three week IR thing is like, it's cool and all, but like, I feel like players are maybe unnecessarily being placed on it that like before would have like, I don't know, missed a week or two and then try to start getting out games. But now it's like, no, just go sit for three weeks, get better and we'll bring you back. And so it's just so difficult to manage all of the injuries, especially like, I have one team where I couldn't feel to complete roster this week because I have so many injuries and I couldn't, and I didn't want to drop any of them. So I just fielded an incomplete roster because I only had like, I only think I had one IR spot. So it was just like, well, here you go Yikes. between injuries and buys. It is what it is. Hey, yeah, just take it. I just took it on the chin. Yeah, there's nothing you can do sometimes, but yeah, I mean, if if you're sitting there with Joe Mixon and Kenny Galladay and Debo Samuel and Chris Carson and Devontae Freeman and um like Zach Ertz, you know, yeah, I mean, Zach Ertz. Yeah. That's gonna like 
Yeah, that's going to happen. I'm sure it's probably happened a lot this year, unfortunately. Our next... Right, who, who else we got that's just going to be great? I can't <laughs> wait to talk about whoever this next crappy player is. <laughs> it's like the poop fecta of waivers, man. <laughs> well, that's waivers poop fecta. <laughs> can't... <laughs> just poop. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna hate it you're gonna hate it so much cam Akers. <laughs> he had 10 he had 10 carries <laughs> Oh man, you're driving me nuts. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Cam Akers. I'm crying That's... and I don't know if it's because I'm laughing or <laughs> just because this is so bad. <laughs> look, look. He rushed 10 times for 38 yards in the week in the Rams week 10 win over the Seahawks, okay? Is this are you talking about Frank Gore or Cam Akers? <laughs> <laughs> it's a three-way split it's it's terrible malcolm brown had eight touches and two touchdowns and daryl henderson had eight touches <clears throat> maybe they're it's trying. okay it's okay if it's in a three-way that's the golden rule i believe that was an <laughs> snl skit right so <laughs> oh Pass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Put a zero dollar bid on Cam Akers in case he does something over the final two months of the season. Uh, next oh, up, Wayne God. Gallman. Touchdown. <laughs> Touch, <laughs> touchdowns. <laughs> touchdowns and force. <laughs> oh, touchdowns and four straight. <laughs> Devonta Freeman is still hurt. <laughs> and the Giants are on a bar. <laughs> Look, it's great. These waivers are great. These are league winning. <laughs> waivers. Whew. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to make it through this one. <laughs> Wayne Gallman. Oh. Look, man. He rushed 18 times for 53 yards and two oh. scores. Like, I hate it. But. <sighs> yeah, I mean, of, of all the guys that we've talked about, I, I think he's probably the best one. Uh, by a pretty wide margin. Uh, Devonta's I'd be very on IR. Like, yeah, but even even when Freeman comes back, I, I feel like Gallman's really kind of cemented himself. He's got a touchdown in four straight, um, which I, I believe is the first Giants running back to do that in like 20 years or something. That's what they were they were saying on the Fox Fox broadcast. Um, so not not even Saquon did that a couple of years ago when when he was going off. Um, he was only rostering 30.5% of leagues. Um, so, I mean, he's probably the guy to pick up this week, uh, but he's on a bye. Yeah, but he's on a so. bye. <laughs> he's got one more start coming up against the Bengals, though. Week 12 is going to be lit. Litty. Um, so, yeah, uh, Cincinnati at Seattle, Arizona, Cleveland, and then at Baltimore to kind of round it out here. Um, so, yeah, he... Um, He's he's pick up a bull. Um, you can probably discount your bid a little bit because he is on a buy. Um, he's probably uh, I mean, is this 10, 10 to 15 percent as well? Well, if, for a bye week and one start, I don't know if you're desperate. Ugh. yeah. Oh, my God. This is terrible. Who's next? <laughs> Tony Pollard, nine carries for 57 yards before a Anthony. week. Anthony. Before uh, his week 10 bye. 
Shout outs to all the Anthony's out there. There you go. So that's just make sure that he's not on the waiver wire. He should be rostered. Uh, Andy Dalton is practicing. So there you go. Maybe that offense breathes a little bit of life into it. Any, any, and any, you got anything on, on Tony? Um, no. Put a dollar uh, down. I mean, no, he's a zero bid. Okay. Um, yeah. T- Tony the Tiger. Um, he's, uh, I mean, he's just a handcuff for me. I don't think you need to roster him unless you own Zeke. Um, I don't think he's going to be productive enough to play him. So unless Zeke gets hurt, um, I think you can just let him be, honestly, in my opinion. There you go. And then uh, wide receiver waivers. We have first up Jalen Rager. He led the Eagles in targets, catching four balls for 47 yards on seven targets. Uh, 13 targets and seven catches over his last two games. You have the return of Alshon. Played 18 snaps, had one target, caught zero balls. So how's, how's that? Everybody that felt the need to stash Alshon. Not, not great. So yeah, that piano was fully being pulled around by Alshon in his first game back. <laughs> it was good to see. <laughs> felt like old times. Rager's the guy. He's just, I really, oh, I feel bad for Travis Fulgham managers. Cause I really think Rager is going to steal this job over the last month of the season. It's just yep. that the Eagles are so damn inefficient on offense. I don't really know what the quality is of his output. Like it's not like they're going to start scoring 20 points, 25, 30 points a game. Yeah. So realistically, how well does Rager do? Yeah. I mean, I guess even if it's in garbage time, if they keep losing, but that schedule, we've talked about it week after week after week. It's not, it's not intimidating. So. Yeah. So the, the, they're at Cleveland this week, which Oddly, might be a tough matchup. Cleveland's defense has been somewhat stingy the last couple weeks. Well, they were in a, um, a, a hurricane against this week, everybody. But. Yeah, no, I know, but they've they've been okay for a while, um, and they've kind of been doing the ball control and run, run, run. So you know, there might not even be that many opportunities for the Eagles' offense to be on the field um, because if if they're getting Hunt and um, and Chubb, you know, fifteen plus carries each and really just holding onto the ball, then I think that limits the upside of the entire Eagle offense, which is already limited um, because they're the Eagles offense and they're just not that great. Um, so I, uh, I mean, yeah, Rager should be rostered. Um, I think he's worth a 20% bid in my opinion, if he's still available, um, we're getting down to the end here and you got to spend it if you got it. Um, Unless you're saving up for that one big injury the last couple of weeks here, um, which is generally my philosophy. Um, but I mean, at this point, you gotta I, mean, make I the can't playoffs. think. Yeah. And I also can't think of too many injuries that could happen that you would need to spend a substantial amount of fab on. Um, the, the biggest one or, you know, the biggest two for me is Alexander Madison and Latavius Murray. We talked about it being handcuffed season last week. Um, for the holidays coming up. Um, I can you, is it even handcuff season during COVID? Like, does that limit handcuffing? Yeah, baby. Um, but the, but those, those would be the two, um, two guys that, it, you know, if there's going to be a big injury, it's going to be cook or it's going to be, um, Oh, how am I blanking on the same, uh, Alvin Kamara. So, um, it, it's going to, it's going to be one of those two guys. So if you're, Feeling frisky, as Jason would say, go go and pick up one of those two guys to to roster them instead of the Tony Pollards of the world. Um, so yeah, fifteen to twenty percent on Jalen Rager, uh, I think is is reasonable unless you're saving up for um, saving up for an injury. And I would also say, like, based on roster construction, if you see somebody out there with a backup running back, and all of a sudden you have like a uh, a Marquise Brown or an AJ Green on your roster, and you're like, or a, a Logan Thomas or a backup t- uh, tight end. Like when it gets to the end of the week, just drop them and pick up a handcuff running back on the off chance that somebody gets hurt, so you can save the fab. There you go. That's a nice little trick there. 
Yeah, I agree on the 15 to 20 percent um, fab on Rager. I've just the potential alone. Um, Wentz likes to throw it up to him. So I, I like it. Moving on. Next, we have Michael Pittman. He had a seven catch, 101 yard performance this week, 15 targets in his last two games. Uh, quietly or maybe not so quietly moving ahead of T.Y. Hilton in that offense um, who just can't stay healthy. <clears throat> I feel like Michael Pittman is a guy that could have a great second half of the season. So how much fab would you spend on Michael? I love the fact that somehow wherever Philip Rivers goes, he's going to find a 6-3, 6-4 wide receiver to throw to. Um, I don't know how I didn't see this coming or understand why it was going to happen, but Philip Rivers and Jay Cutler are very similar quarterbacks where they just need somebody tall to throw the ball to. So here comes Michael Pittman. Um, he looked great um, on Thursday night against Tennessee um, in a um, pretty good matchup. Uh, Tennessee can't stop like my grandma running through a line or catching a pass at this point. Um, so yeah, the coming up t green Bay and then Tennessee again. Um, I, I, I think he's very, very pick up and playable rostered in only 5% of leagues. Um, I think you'll be able to get him with a five to 10% bid. Um, so yeah, I, I like my Michael Pittman jr. A lot. I agree. Um, he actually excites me almost as much as Rager does. I just think that that, I just don't like Philip rivers as much as I like. Carson Wentz, honestly, but <clears throat> really, okay. Well, and I don't know that three headed monster at running back. I don't know. Um, I do like Pittman. I, mean, I would go 10 to 15% on him instead of 15 to 20. Like I would on Rager, but Phil Philip rivers has been throwing the ball quite a bit more than Wentz has been. Um, you know, each of the last five games, he has 33 plus attempts. <laughs> excuse me um so i mean i i think the targets are going to be there i think the opportunities are going to be there um so yeah, yeah I, I actually like Pittman just as much as rager yeah and Pittman is playing more than 80 percent of snaps now he actually played 87 <clears throat> percent so i mean the snap percentage is climbing yeah, he's an every down receiver now more or less he has 15 targets over the last two weeks He's, I think, definitely the best receiver in that offense right now. So, yeah, go get you some Michael Pittman. Yep. Uh, next up, we have Sammy the Watkins. Pittman. Sammy Watkins coming back from a hamstring oh, no. injury soon. He's coming back from a hamstring injury soon. He's the number two receiver on that team. <clears throat> I just think that you could pick him up for probably zero dollars and put him on your bench and watch what he does. And then you have the number two receiver on a top five offense for the fantasy playoffs. I'm just saying, go get you some Sammy. No. All right. That's fine. I mean, Nicole Hardman's been fine um, when he plays. Um, but yeah, just trying to figure out who that second wide receiver is. Uh, it's pretty clearly Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey um, yeah. with some running backs sprinkled in there. But yeah, I mean, if you can figure out if Sammy Watkins is going to stay healthy for a game, then that's great. Um, but uh, good luck to you. All right. So you're not even stashing him, huh? Not even for zero dollars? No. <clears throat> All right. Let him be. The next up, I have KJ Hamler. <clears throat> I've been beating this drum for a while. KJ Hamler has 20 targets. In his last two games. Okay. Now. The guy is good at football. He caught five of ten targets for 50 yards in the Broncos week 10 loss to the Raiders. He caught six of ten last week for 75 yards against the Falcons. The only thing that worries me is if Drew Locke is healthy enough to play right now. It's kind of up in the air and iffy. Uh, I just think that he's the second best receiver on that team. I actually think he's very good at football. Uh, ten plus targets and back ten targets and back to back weeks is obviously very appealing in any format, um, but especially PPR because uh, the yards aren't really there. 
Uh, he's sort of like he's the outlet receiver on a lot of those catches if you actually watch the game. Um, but yeah, I, I think that there's a little value there. I just wish Drew Locke was healthy, but Ripian wasn't really much worse than him when he did play earlier. So maybe he is able to sustain a little bit of value. I would put a zero bid or one buck and just put him on the end of your bench. I think that's fair. I would not ever go more than that for Mr. Ham Man. Um, plus, the next couple of weeks are really tough matchups. Miami, New Orleans, and Kansas City um, are three of the more stingy defenses, actually, against wide receivers. Um, so, I mean, I understand why you'd want to roster him, um, but those are that is he's got a tough, tough sled coming up, um, especially with no lock. Um, and that offense has been very stagnant the first three quarters and then Locke kind of starts airing it out once they're behind. Um, so maybe we'll get some garbage points. Um, I, I think that's all you're really hoping for with Hamler. Next up, we have Cole Beasley. He had 13 targets against Arizona on a bye this week. Turned it into 11 catches for 109 yards and a score. How much dough are you out there trying to drop on Cole Beasley? And that terrible playoff <clears throat> schedule. Yeah, it's tough, right? I mean, he's averaged 13 points a week, um, which is pretty good. Um, yeah, his playoff schedule uh, starting in week 13 at San Francisco, Pittsburgh, Denver, and then at New England. It's just okay. It's not, it's not the worst. It's not the best. Um, but if they're like, it seems like whenever they have close games, that they air the ball out a lot like they don't they're not turning around and giving it to moss or singletary a whole bunch they're they're throwing and cole's cole beasley is the legit number two um behind Diggs on this on this team um so i i he had a couple stinkers the last two weeks with two and three catches um but before that, like just to run down a half PPR, 9.8, 12, 16, 12.2, 11.3, 14.5, 22.2. Like he is almost one of the more consistent wide receivers there's been this year. Um, just from a from an output perspective, roster in 46.1% of leagues. Um, he's got a bye week this week. Sucks. Um, yep. So because of that. You can discount it a little bit. Um, 5% probably is where he comes in at um, just because of the, just because of the buy and you won't, you don't have to spend as much as you normally would. Next up we have, I don't even, I don't disagree with you at all. Beasley. I think that he's good. I just think that that team has been a little bit up and down lately with Josh Allen being a little bit up and down lately. I mean, he basically put up 15 points a week for the last month outside of this last week. So, um, hopefully he's right. able to turn it back on. He's kind of a sketchier. Like, I think if you have Josh Allen, you have to start him, but I, he's just not as in, he's not as consistent as I wish he was, but yeah. Yeah. Next up, we have Alan Lazard. Basically make sure he's not on the waiver wire because he was the wide receiver too in that offense for the Packers before he was injured with the core muscle injury and subsequent surgery. You have Marquez Valdez Scantling absolutely blowing up uh, the last two weeks, um, blew up again this week. So I'm just maybe a short lived. Do you think he's going to be activated soon, Alex? Yeah, so it uh, looks like he's going to be activated on Wednesday for the coach. It's looking good. Um, Lazard is back and your DBs are in trouble. Hey, la, de la, Lazard is back. Like, we can get excited about this. I mean, he, he's been gone since that huge game against the Saints. Um, I, I know Devontae Adams uh, is clearly the number one, but I think Lazard is clearly the number two when, now, that, now that he's back this week. Um, I think you can sneakily probably get him for a 5% bid just because it still says IR next to him. Um, he should absolutely be picked up. Like it? Like it? Only rostered in 30% of leagues. Like, that's, that's crazy to me. That I, is, I feel like the IR slot has really thrown a lot of people off. Yeah, that's very low. That's too low. 
Uh, that does it for receivers. Moving on to tight ends, we have a few to mention. We've already talked about one, and that is Taysom Hill. We think he could potentially have an expanded <laughs> role with Drew Brees missing time. It's not too far fetched. I'm the position, honestly, sucks unless you have Travis Kelsey because nobody else is really doing much of anything. Sure. So why not throw in Taysom Hill? He's going to get some red zone work, get some rushing attempts, probably going to throw a few passes with Drew Brees out for the next two to three weeks while he works on his uh, chest injuries. And so, yeah, at least two to three weeks. He's dude's got a collapsed lung and he's like 43. <laughs> like are you telling me like you're you're 40 plus I'm 30 plus and like I threw my back out last week putting my pants on I don't know how somebody is 40 plus and getting hit by 300 pound men fracturing ribs puncturing their lung and then wanting to come back and play football again these guys are just crazy yeah they are but yeah moving Drew Brees and putting him on IR is not even being discussed so he will be back sooner. He's got a punctured lung. He's going to be back sooner than later, man. They're not even going to put him on IR. So, yeah. Taysom Hill. Taysom Hill. Viable. Free, probably, don't you think? 2020, man. Yeah. Unbelievable. I bet he's here. We are. Do you think he's free Taysom on waivers? Hill. Would you put a dollar on him? <clears throat> no, I wouldn't. I think you get him for free. Next up, another injured guy, because everybody's gotten injured this year. Zach Ertz coming back from IR Oblivion soon. Is that enough to maybe spark that offense a little bit? Um, are you spending? No, no, probably not. No, probably not. <laughs> I tell you what I'm excited <laughs> for. I'm, yeah. I'm excited for that Twitter account that that uh, tweets every time Zach Ertz catches the ball, whether or not he breaks the tackle and the answer is always no. I'm excited for yep. those tweets to start back nope. up again, but you could probably get him for free yeah, or maybe uh, a buck. I mean, as, well, yeah, as much as we want to hate on Zach Ertz and I mean, he has not been the guy that we thought he was going to be coming in, into the year. I mean, he has averaged 8.3 points. Uh, which is one of the higher uh, averages for tight ends. Um, he had a couple <clears throat> 10 target weeks. Um, if he comes back, I'm assuming he's going to immediately be a top five tight end for the rest of the year, even though he hasn't been. Um, so if he's available, uh, roster in 58 point or yeah, 58.4 percent of leagues, um, he should be rostered. Um, he's been designated to return from IR. That doesn't necessarily mean he's going to play this upcoming week. Um, but he's got Seattle the week after in week 12. Um, and so provided he's active for that game, um, maybe we'll finally see the, the 30 point week out of Ertz that he's popped off a couple times over the last couple of years. He sure and then all has. of a sudden he'd be like tight end six. <laughs> uh, and then finally our last tight end coming back from injury, Jordan Reed is back ladies and gentlemen he had six targets that he turned into five catches for 62 yards yes that's very pedestrian for every position but tight end is kind of pedestrian in general this season uh and yes we are recommending another player that's on by this week so how's that for hashtag fantasy <laughs> football analysis um the tight end is a focal point yeah. the tight end is a focal point of that offense Maybe you get Jimmy G back after the bye week as well. Get a little bit of offensive mojo moving and maybe Jordan Reed has some value down the stretch. I think you can get him for zero dollars, especially if he's on a bye. I totally agree. Um, hope he can stay healthy. Um, he's always, he's been super talented forever. Um, but he just hasn't been able to stay on the field. So um, hopefully he's able to do that down the stretch. He ran 22 pass routes to Ross Dwelly's 18 against the Saints. So, <sighs> slowly coming back. We made it. <laughs> yeah, right. What an episode. Yeah. I mean, this, this could have been our best work. 50 minutes of just 
Wow. What in the, I mean, if you're still listening, like you truly are a sacco. Like I, we, <laughs> we appreciate you. I can't, I, I mean, I, I can't even describe how faithful you are to still be listening to this podcast. Cause this has been a whole bunch of poop. While you're here, please continue to like this poop and uh, yeah, subscribe on whatever listening platform you're on. Hit the bell if you're on YouTube, drop it a like. And uh, thank you guys so much for listening to today. Um, Alex, I feel like this was a great episode. This was, this was, it was not, it was honestly, it was a lot of hot garbage. Like these waivers suck this week, so. I don't they know. suck. Oh well, they suck. And with that, man, oh man, let's move to the social media page. Thank you all for listening. We are the Fantasy Football Sackos at the FF Sackos on all of the social media platforms. Coming up on a thousand Twitter followers, we're over eight hundred. We're coming for you. If you do not follow us on Twitter, we got memes. We have the best memes. They are the they're they're pretty good memes. Not gonna lie. Uh, and yeah have a good night they are way better than this episode was thank you for listening to another episode of the fantasy football sackos podcast follow us on instagram and twitter at the ff sackos